First, I'm going to introduce myself because it's rude not to uh, not to introduce yourself. Um, then I'm going to give a short presentation on the, my journey towards discovering what the Constitution was, uh, with a view to um, assisting you in your journey. Um, uh, and then I've got some topics that I'm researching at the moment. I'm going to ask for some help uh, uh, in, in doing the research. Okay. So first, I'll tell you about myself. Then, then I'll tell you about my journey, um, and then and then I'll ask you to help me with some stuff. Okay. Um, my only claim to fame is I did 30 years police service, retired in 19, in 2008, uh, but I woke up 10 years previously, which is a problem, isn't it? Anyone work for the government at the moment? Anyone ever work for the government? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's at least one there. No, it's committing to it. It is a problem. Um, uh, uh, what did it for me was the right to bear arms issue, because as a policeman on a daily basis, I meet people being victims of criminals, um, and uh, most people think, have we got the right to bear arms? What do you mean by bare arms? Weapons. That's not bare arms. Go on. Yeah. Bearing arms, is, that's a coat of arms. No, no, it's got two meanings. It's like a lot of legal words that have two meanings. Now, I'm referring to the American Second Amendment. Where, where did the Americans get their Second Amendment from? The Constitution. Us, because they're, they're, they're Englishmen who emigrated and kept their rights better than us. So, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, the right to bear arms. On a daily basis, people become victims. Um, uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, uh, we, we have the second highest figure figure for violent crime attacks on people. Um, uh, one behind Scotland. One behind Scotland. They may not be done with firearms, they're done with fists and feet and blunt instruments and what have you, and weight of numbers, but they're there and we've got a very high, high violent crime rate. Uh, uh, and, and, and we don't have, uh, uh, we, we're not exercising our right to bear arms. Every other country in the, in the world, for example Italy, France, Germany, do a little test. Next time you're online, go to um, the gun shop in Calais, Calais in France, and look for arms for defence, and you'll see a whole blood-curdling list of uh, weapons that Frenchmen carry. And we don't. It's all been forgotten about. Would you like me to talk about that as one of the topics? Yeah, yeah? OK. Right. Um, so I wake up in 2008. The reason I wake up is, is, is the, the, the gun blame incident. Uh, I've, had, I've had guns on certificate for, for many years, never shot anybody. Lots of paper targets, no, no, no people. And then Dun Lane happens. I didn't know about full slag. I didn't know about mind control. I didn't know about um, 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 campaigns to whip up public opinion. And of course, all those happened. Can you think back? Can you think back to public publicity campaigns? Big posters appear. Nobody knows who's paid for them, and that sort of thing. Didn't know about it, but I did know that we had a bill of rights. And the reason I knew about the bill of rights, I was in the territorial army before I joined the police, and we had lessons on it. Soldiers have lessons on it. And the reason soldiers have lessons on it is because. The soldier's oath is, I'll serve Her Majesty, her heirs and successors. Her Majesty, her heirs and successors. In the event of being an issue as to who the lawful successor is, um, soldiers are expected to make a, 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 a judgment uh, and avoid fighting if it's all possible. Make a judgment, Her Majesty, her heirs and successors. Um, which, other, uh, which other public official makes a similar oath? What do you think? Well, policemen don't. The policeman's oath is to Her Majesty, it doesn't mention their successors. The magistrate's oath is to Her Majesty, it doesn't mention their successors. But the judges, who are one half step up from magistrates, aren't they? Yeah, it is their successors. So it's a little known thing that, uh, that the, uh, the establishment uh, is, has got a plan for dealing with the succession crisis. Um, I think we should have. I'm not keen on uh, Prince Charles being, um, being the next, uh, the next, uh, next in line. Uh, I think we should have a publicity campaign, but that's, that's another issue. Who thinks Prince Charles should be the next king? Who thinks we should have a king? <laughs> yeah, uh, we, more people agreeing. I can see where you're coming from. Yes, uh, that, 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 that's my point of view. I didn't know any better. If you spoke to me 20 years ago, I'd be queen country and all that sort of thing. Yeah. But I woke up. And what did it was, in fact, the, the Dunblane incident. Uh, a court case was generated uh, by a friend of mine, as it happens. Uh, um, um, uh, his pistols were seized by the government, basically, as mine were, except for one. Uh, he, he, uh, five minutes to midnight on the last day for seizures, he, he deposited it at the Slough Police Station uh, and said, uh, said to the PC behind the counter, look after that because I'm going to apply to the Chief Constable for a Section 7 permit. Section 7 of the Firearms Act 1968, Chief Constable finish your permit. Um, and I'm also going to apply to the Home Secretary for what's called a Section 5 authority. Different sorts of weapons are put in different legal categories and pistols suddenly became Section 5. And you could get a permit or a certificate from the Home Secretary, but they don't issue them. Why, why don't they issue them? Exactly. Yeah, quite right. They've had a policy since 1969. Up until 1969, if you wanted arms for defence, uh, you could apply for arms certificate and, and you get them. And a lot of people did. Not many people got shot. Um, in the mid 1960s, there was one case where a private, a, pri a, pri a private security officer shot a bank robber, and that was about it. 
uh, uh, up, up until the, to, to the late 1960s, it, it wasn't an issue. Bank managers would have a, uh, a free firearm certificate and they'd have a half dozen revolvers and if, if they were on the day that the, the, the vaults were being emptied or what have you, um, bank staff would be given, uh, given a revolver uh, to defend it. And it's living memory in 1969, it's not that long ago, is it? And it's all we've forgotten about, people don't know. Um, a quick way to find out about this, if you were, if you were to go to the British Constitution Group um, uh, website and, and look for the conference in 2014, um, then you'll see a, um, a video of me talking at length about it. And what I do when I do one of these presentations is, if I, if I, if I mention something, I'll send an email to the organiser uh, with the links. So you don't need to remember them, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So your, your, your Rob will, will send you the links. Okay. Now, I, I said I was going to introduce myself. Well, I've got a good memory. And it's not an accident. It's not an accident. Um, we used to have grammar schools, didn't we? Yeah, we used to have grammar school, so, so I went to grammar school, and it's the only way for a sort of bright working class boy to get anywhere, wasn't it, really? Okay, I'm not saying I got anywhere, but <laughs> it was me personally, but on the whole, it was a good thing. Um, and uh, I was fortunate in the sixth form to have a, a teacher. We all have one teacher we remember, don't we? Mine was Mr. Mulliner, a northern bloke, wearing a tweed jacket with leather patches on the elbows, like they used to. Um, and um, um, uh, it's 1972, so I'm in the lower sixth. And, um, he persuades the school to do an experiment on the class. So there's, there's a British psychologist by the name, name of Tony Buzan, and again the link will be on the email you get. Yeah, Tony Buzan, yeah, that's right, yeah. yes, yeah, brilliant, brilliant psychologist. And he came up with a way of studying, remembering things, reading quickly, and absorbing information, and then reproducing it, yeah. Okay, so, so, so my class were experimented on, I've ended up with a very good memory. Um, so it's not necessarily being, me being clear, but it's something we, we can all do. And part of this movement should be to improve our study skills. Uh, because in, or in order to take the other side on, uh, you have to know what you're talking about, don't you, really? So you need to study, uh, and the, there is a method of learning to do it. Now, the upper classes have known about this uh, for many years. I don't suppose, if anyone goes to public school, uh, oh, there's one at the back, yeah, there we, there we go, perhaps you confirm this. Uh, in public schools, they have what they call the trivium. Yeah. yeah, and the trivium has got three, three topics, and it's a general purpose tool for learning anything. So the general purpose tool for learning anything are rhetoric, which is understanding the spoken word, logic to work out logical conclusions from what you've learned, and rhetoric to persuade others. So public school was a taught the, 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 the trivium, how to learn. And grammar. Uh, sorry? And grammar. Grammar. Well, you, re rhetoric yeah, is part of grammar. Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, grammar is part of rhetoric. Um, so, so come exam times, uh, uh, public school boys, they, they do public exams, like other levels or what have you. But they cram, they call it cramming, they learn it in a short period. <coughs> and the reason they can do that is they've got a general purpose tool and they can cram uh, and they have a higher pass rate than average. And that still continues to the present day, but the, we who, whose children went to the national curriculum, uh, it's my only regret in life, let my children be uh, educated by that system, um, uh, 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 don't know about it. So again, I'll send you some links to the trivium. Uh, and and, you, and once you've got these tools, then you can absorb, absorb information and reproduce it quickly. Because there may come a time when somebody asks, asks you questions, uh, perhaps if you, you, you generate a court case for something that involves you personally, you may have to think on your feet. Okay? Uh, and, and quite, quite often, in the, uh, embarrassing judges are generally posh boys, aren't they? Uh, and they've had the advantage of this system, but we haven't. So let's fight the buggers back with the same ammunition. Okay? That's what we're talking about. Well, I've introduced myself. So what, what happened in, in 1998? Uh, a friend of mine, friend of mine uh, applied for his, uh, his permit for this revolver. He, he handed over the counter. Um, uh, he didn't get it, so, so he applied to the, uh, to the uh, High Court for a... Then it was known as an order of mandatory. It's a mandatory order now. It means saying to the judge, this, this person hasn't given me what he should. Can you tell him to? And he was relying on the Bill of Rights. He was relying on the Bill of Rights, because Article 7 of the Bill of Rights says the subject may have arms for their defence. Uh, and uh, uh, he didn't get anywhere with the order of mandibus, so he appealed that decision. So we went to the, went to the, uh, the High Court, the Court of Appeal. I was actually some Kenzie friend. I was a serving policeman, so I did in plain clothes, <laughs> kept my head down. But uh, um, we, we, we were basically, basically cheated by three judges, Ju Justice Gibson, Henry and Morris. Um, and I'm going to send you a link to the case because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's on the legal databases. And they basically said the Bill of Rights is an Act of Parliament and can be repealed by the next Act of Parliament, which was the Firearms Act. Uh, you don't get your pistol. That's the bad news. Ten years later, there's the Metric Martyr case. The Metric Martyr case is a man called Thoburn, who's a market trader up north somewhere, and he's selling bananas by the, by the pound, which is a heinous crime, according to the local council. <laughs> <laughs> he should be selling them by the kilo. 
So he, uh, he gets taken to court, um, and it ends up, uh, 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 again, again in the court of appeal, I'll send you the link, and the, decision, the judgment was, constitutional statutes are special, they can't be impliedly repealed. And the constitutional statutes were Magna Carta, Bill of Rights, uh, Act of Settlement. Okay? So, so what we've got is a judgment by the mainstream courts that says, the statutes to protect our rights can't be, can't be repealed by implication. If Parliament wants to repeal them, it has to come out in public and say so. Okay, and I'll send you the link, link about that. Now, the, the consequences of that, which is I'm gonna, once we get the slide projector working, I'm going to go through the slides. And the consequence of that is, um, if you're confronted by a mainstream lawyer or an ignorant person that says we haven't got a constitution and we haven't got any acts, acts of Parliament that protect us, you, 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 can, you can prove that we have. And the key to understanding statutes is there are two, it's like a lot of things, as, as you men mentioned. Legal words can have two meanings. Arms can mean weapons, and arm can mean coat of arms, can't it? So a statute's got two meanings. The first parliament is considered to be 1297. So it's 1297, it's a long time ago, isn't it? Uh, and the first parliament consists of the king and his principal advisers, the barons, okay? Um, and and, and they, they descend from the Witan. And the Witan is the Saxon meeting where decisions are made. And they're made by a vote. And only free men can vote in the Witan. So let's go back to 700, perhaps, and the Witan's meeting. Um, and how can free man prove that they're free men? Okay? How can free man prove he's a free man? Is by Sorry? By voting. Sorry, voting? No. By, voting. <laughs> by producing his personal weapon. Okay? Because in that society you had slaves, and slaves aren't allowed to defend themselves. So the signal of a free man is the right to bear arms. That's how important it is. Okay? And the second thing is, title to the kingdom is set by trial by battle. <coughs> so the Witan would vote, and they didn't have the rule that the eldest son got the job. So the king dies, they didn't have the rule that the eldest son got the job. They first of all vote on it. If that didn't work, they'd elect a champion, the two champions will fight. And if not, they'd have a general battle and sort it out. And the last time that was done, in, in actual fact, well, it's been done on two major occasions. One was 1215, which is Magna Carta. And the other is 1688, which is the Gorgeous Revolution. Okay, so trial to trial to trial to title to land is settled by trial by battle. Trial by combat for individuals um, was last used in 1820. Okay, but it, it wasn't successfully used because what ha happened was it sort of died out. And the reason it died out is the church took 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 a took a, took a uh, dislike of it uh, because the trials 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 by battle and trials by ordeal, which is hot stone or water. Uh, were, uh, were uh, officiated by priests. And around about 1300, the Pope decided that uh, it was a bad thing for priests to be involved in this sort of unpleasantness. Uh, and that's, that's when uh, Henry II um, uh, offered trial by what we now know, jury. Okay. Um, I've been involved in running a number of grand juries, so I'll give you a, a rundown on that shortly. And I'll tell you how far we've got. Um, uh, it's good in parts. We're well on the way to get a test case. Because the, the river I've gone down is... Um, we live in an adversarial legal system, and the only way you can test something is by taking the buggers on. Okay, and if you can't do it, assisting somebody who's found themselves in a position where they must. So I've assisted a number of cases where people have problems with the authorities, um, and, uh, uh, and, and assisted them as a Mackenzie friend. Do you remember Mackenzie friend by you? Mackenzie friend is a, a, is a person who, who is um, <coughs> considered suitable by the court, to, to assist, assist a, a defendant putting the case themselves. They don't have authority to talk on behalf of the, of the, of the person that's in trouble, but they are allowed to advise them. So I, I always allow them in a loud whisper, not my so everyone can hear. <laughs> that seems to work. Most yeah, recent one really was Tom Crawford's case, where we were talk, talking loudly in the back, and they, uh, the, the, the judge in the end, it's very, very hard when somebody does that, for the judge to say, keep, keep up. He said, shh, shh, and then the end he was talking to us, wasn't he? Yeah. So that's the way around it. Okay, so, so I've covered, introduced myself, told you what woke me up. I mean, I've seen, I've seen dead people, I've, I remember seeing a woman dead on the slab with broken fingernails, for example. That's, that's what we're talking about, it's not nice, is it? Yeah, can you picture the scene? Yeah, yeah. it's all for the sake of having a little knife in your pocket or a little, little uh, a taser or a pepper spray or a gun. Okay, and that's what they've done to us. And of course, the political effects of being a defensive and defenseless on our population is oppression, isn't it? It's tyranny and oppression. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the remedies uh, uh, for tyranny and oppression, in fact, was the duel. 
so the jewel. So, so to, the, um, again, the Americans kept it up longer than we did. If you ever watch a cowboy film and they have the gunfight at OK Corral, yeah, OK? It was lawful for those men to fight because they could each claim self-defence. They voluntarily put themselves on either the, the, the position. It wasn't a breach of the peace. Uh, 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 it was recognised that uh, as a final result, when somebody has infringed your rights, you're entitled to call them out for a duel. Um, Dueling this country died out in around, around, around about the Napoleonic Wars period because it came, became very, very popular amongst army officers and the attrition rate was too great. So, so Wellington is the general. And he said, he said, cut it out, chaps. <laughs> we need you to fight the French, not each other, basically. And that's how it died out. It's like a lot of things. Go on. So, John, have we got the right to bear arms? We have, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought we were all slaves. Um, well, well it's only, uh -huh. you're only a slave if you, don't, if you don't know it, if you don't exercise mm -hmm. it. Well, is, isn't the birth certificate supposed to have enslaved us? Um, and, and all our rights were taken no. away at birth? Uh, well, well, well no, no, no. And the answer is, each successive, each successive uh, uh, king has, has promised in the coronation oath to rule the kingdom according to its laws, customs and statutes agreed on. So, so it's custom that we've got the right to bear arms. So, so, so it's, in, it's infringed, but it's like any breach of the common law. It's infringed, but it's never taken away. So, for example, the American Second Amendment, can you recall what that says? It says, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. So they can try. Uh, and if you watch, watch my video of, um, of the, the, the conference in, in 2014, BCG, you'll, you'll see me talk about this. Uh, what what, what ha happened was, uh, it's 1969, Roy Jenkins is Home Secretary. He's in legal difficulties because there's been a number of horrific murders in the 60s, the, uh, the, um, uh, the Moors murderers uh, and uh, uh, Harry Roberts who shot some policemen in Shepherd's Bush and that sort of thing. And they really should have been hung, but he's persuaded Parliament to give a five-year moratorium an experimental suspension of the, of the death penalty because the death penalty is part of the common law as well. Murder is a common law crime. There's no act of harm that says you mustn't murder people. You just mustn't. And the reason, reason you just mustn't is, juries consistently down the centuries have all agreed that murdering somebody without good cause is out of order. And if murder is a common law crime, the penalty is also set by common law. And it's public execution as well. And that's a protection to make sure the right one gets hung. Um, uh, because otherwise the Crown would sort of find the vagrant and hang him instead or something like that. They wouldn't put it past them. Um, and one of the final, uh, my, my, my father was a policeman as well, he t told me the story. Um, if, 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 if you arrested a man for murder and he was hung, you got, you got invited to, to the prison to view the body afterwards, apparently. To say, this, yes, you've got the right man, this is the one I, the one I arrested. Picture the scene in the 1950s, can't you? Yeah. That's after he picked on. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> there we go. Okay, so I've talked about some heavy duty stuff, but uh, it is heavy duty stuff they're doing to us. Uh, and if we don't do something about it, who suffers? Our ancestors. Yeah, our descendants. Yeah, yes, exactly. yeah, yeah. Yes, oh, absolutely. Our descendants, our children. So what, what we do is we're condemning, condemning the next generation to, to further tyranny, and it'll be technical tyranny. Um, uh, uh, and currently they're under tyranny and they don't know it. But I think we're on the cusp of awakening, so we've got a good room full here. We've got 30 or 40 people, haven't we? And you, you represent, for each one of you, there's probably a hundred that's a bit worried, and a thousand that doesn't know what's going on. <laughs> and that's the, way, that's the way to look at it. And of course, each one of, each, each one of us is indispensable because um, uh, uh, we, we've each got our, our life experiences, and we've each got our, our um, uh, way of looking at the world, but some things are just wrong, like murder is just wrong, isn't it? And tyranny is just wrong. And that's around it. Definition of tyranny is rule, rule contrary to law. Okay, and that means I had a friend who was a prison officer. We were both into martial arts and we both used to teach self defence. So I used to teach self defence to the policemen how to use batons and handcuffs and things, um, and, and also to the public. So I used to have public classes, teenagers to assist me, ladies basically. Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, well, one of the issues was everyone's, you know, in this room, you've probably got some grievances with policemen, haven't you? No. Oh, I'd like some. Okay, that's a usual. So feel free. So that's the question, question and answer at the end. Okay. Uh, because I, if I don't know the answer, I might put you where, 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 where I can find it. But this is what went wrong with the police. Now, this is something I share with people. Now, this is a theory. A theory is a, uh, a, something, a conclusion a person has come to as a result of observing the world around them. And a theory allows you to predict the future because you can test it. In science, it's called peer reviewing, isn't it? You, 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 you discover something, you write a scientific paper about it, and it's peer reviewed. Okay. Now, I got, I got this from across the old RAF officer about 15 years ago. Um, he, was, he was a passed over because he, was, he liked to drink, apparently, but he was quite happy living along in the stores on an RAF camp that I used to, he used to use. 
um, uh, use their classrooms for training purposes. So this is, this is what he said. It's 1998 and Tony, Tony Blair comes into office. They say power, don't they? Yeah. yeah, it's office. So Tony Blair comes into office and he has the head of MI5. MI5 is the internal security service. And MI6 is James Bond foreigners. MI5 is internal. And Blair says to, says to the head of MI5, um, we're going to pass some legislation that's going to be unpopular with the security forces, the police and the army. What do you think will happen? Um, and the head of MI5 goes away, does some research and comes back. And this is what he says. There are three sorts of people in government jobs. Young and stupid will follow orders. Old and weary, coming up for retirement, won't make waves. And you might find you've got a problem group in the middle. I like to think I'll be in the problem group. We'll say, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Can't do that. Okay? So, so what happens? It suddenly became very easy to leave on ill health grounds. I know it happened in the Metropolitan Police, I know it happened in the Royal Navy from Brian Gerrish. Um, resettlement programs, leave early, my leg hurts, I've got a leg injury, I said I'm retired early, I didn't for personal pride reasons. So the numbers drop. So numbers drop, what are you going to have? Have a recruiting campaign. How do you set your recruits? My generation, you had to have five O levels, including maths and English. Um, and uh, the, the application form was, uh, was um, uh, four pages. And there's an essay at the back, I want to help small children across the road, things like that. Um, goes to a 240 question psychological profile. Psychological profile. Who's seen Thomas, Thomas Sheridan's stuff about psychopaths? Yeah, yeah, 240 questions. Um, and they do away with the educational standards because it was actually said hot toxins in Africa don't have O levels, so it's unfair to ask for O levels. Okay, you see where I'm coming from? Um, they do away with the physical standards, so, 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 so male and female have the same PT test. So men do little girly press ups from the, from the yeah, that, that sort of thing. Uh, they do away with the height limit because certain nationalities yeah. are shorter. I yeah, that's right. So loads of, loads of white men, and <laughs> loads of short white men suddenly appear, don't they, with tattoos and steroids. Uh, 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 and the same process is applied to uh, uh, any internal transfers. How are they going to train them? So they change training school. Two lesbians posted to training school. They're into public displays of perfection. The traditional sergeant at training school was an old crusty with 28 years service, a couple of years nine to five, teaching the recruits, no, no stress, you know, and they'll ride off into the sunset and emigrate to Wales like, like I did. Okay, so crusty old sergeant is typically going to say something, they're holding hands uh, in the corridors and kissing, kissing on the sofa in the common room. Okay, two lesbians say nothing for about three months, they've got a black book. Suddenly there's a load of homophobia complaints. And the crusty old sergeant suddenly find they're back on division doing early nights and nights in the big boots and the pointy hat. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> say, so what happened? Okay, and similar people are then, then posted to training school because they've, they've got the psychological profile. They know who they want, they post them to training school. Uh, recruits at training school are told that there's a, um, uh, an informant in each class recruited by the complaints department. And if anybody says anything racist, sexist, homophobic, or anything like that, yeah, yeah, they'll be in trouble. Uh, okay, you can see where I'm coming from. All stages. Yeah, yeah, anything like that, yes, yeah. <laughs> So it's completely changed. So when you meet a policeman today, he's probably not what I would consider a good bloke. Uh, he's probably somebody that, that's, that's terrified of uh, falling foul of all these isms. Do you agree with me? Yeah. yeah that's right. Okay. Well, that's what's happened. In t implied to internal transfers, a friend of mine wants to transfer to CID. Um, one of the questions was, have you noticed any minority group that has a greater than, than average of, uh, 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 effect, being a victim of crime has a greater than average effect on? And he apparently wrote, I've noticed that homosexuals get more upset than normal people. Handed the form in. The big hooter goes off at Scotland Yard. <laughs> Two days later, he was called into the superintendent's office. You're barred for applying for anything three years. You know, uh, that, that sort of thing. So, so the reg regime completely ch ch changed. It's not funny, it's serious, isn't it? Because you don't have a representative sample of the population anymore. And the other thing is honesty. I come from a third generation police family. So for me to turn criminal, there's a lesson in training school. Uh, on, on, on honesty, and because and uh, I joined in '78, so don't accept a bribe less than half a million because that's what you start to lose. <laughs> half a million is your wages plus your pension, wasn't it? Okay, it's probably more now because of inflation. Um, and it's unlikely for somebody, a third generation policeman, to deliberately turn on, it's dishonest, isn't it? Yeah, okay, you don't know where these people come from, you can't check their backgrounds, they're foreigners with completely, completely different, different ethics and morals, that sort of thing. And they're a problem to us, and they're potential oppressors. They're potential oppressors. Well, they are oppressors, aren't they? Yeah. So um, they remind me of the Terminator. The Terminator that um, uh, 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 he won't stop. He will not stop. He will kill you. Yeah. And that's the sort of person we're up against. 
But the good news is, my experience is that one man in five, and I can't think of a woman it happened to, it's probably said, but one man in five, after about 18 months, they seek out the older policeman and say, training school's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's some hope. So you can reckon there's one in five who are going to come over. So we've all met some good policemen, haven't we, on, on occasion, who've done, done the right thing, but they're very much a minority. There's a lad we were speaking to downstairs who's 23. Um, where is he? There, there we go. He's probably the youngest in the room, isn't he? Yeah, so what's our mission? Who have we got to convert? The next generation, isn't it? Yeah, the next generation. Okay, so you've woken up, well done. So you've got a big job, okay? You've got a big job. And now you asked me downstairs, how many people do you think we're going to we need to wake up? Well, the remedy is, you remember I said I was in the army before I joined the police? We had lessons on leadership, cut long story short. Um, and the army discovered that only 3% only of the population are leaders. That was in 1916, in, in, the, in, the, in the first part of the First World War. Uh, there were huge casualties, but, but unfortunately the casualties, and we now know it's the Rothschilds, were the best men in the country, both physically and morally. Okay, so come 1916, the song, huge casualties, big recruiting campaign, compulsory description, how are we going to select our leaders? So the army did some research, it's only 3%. So our mission is to recruit 3% of the population, particularly the younger ones. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? Sorry? Yeah, it was edu education, isn't it? That, 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 that's right, it's education. Because I would say many people know something's wrong, but they can't put their finger on it. Many people know something's wrong, they can't put their finger on it. So the insight I was given by another person, it wasn't me, what they've done to us isn't political, it's legal. Because they've got control of the levers, the legal system, haven't they? Okay? Now, the legal system is basically based on precedent. Because remember, I was able to talk about the Witan and the, the, man, with, the man with the spear, you know, the, the weapon was, was the free man, and that, that, that sort of thing. Uh, it's based on pre precedent, and <coughs> if the other side break precedent too badly, then there's a price to pay. And the price to pay is being caught out legally, and also being caught out politically. Now, Rob was saying that he said, he said he's heard that the courts accept that if, if confidence is lost in the judges, what happens? There's no, there's no functioning judiciary. There's no functioning judiciary, that's right. And then what happens is there's no functioning, functioning judiciary. We go back to the law of the jungle. The basic law of the jungle is the blood feud. I get to spend more money because I don't have it taken off. Yeah, you don't have it taken off, use no, the blood feud. Okay? So, so primitive societies yeah. have the blood feud where, where you kill me and my cousins kill you and your, your cousins, that sort of thing. And, and it worked up to a point, uh, uh, but it, it was mess, mess, messy, messy and disrupted agriculture and that sort of thing because you were down in private queues going on. So, so it's reckoned that King Alfred in about 843, one of, one, of his, one of his things was he was the first powerful king to cover the whole kingdom. And the contract with King Alfred was. Um, you give up your right to personal self-defence and personal, per, not self-defence, personal right to rectify wrongs, you know, the blood feud, uh, and we'll have courts, and the courts will have juries, and the decisions will be made on a rational basis. And the bad news is that's been taken away from us, isn't it, gradually? Yeah. It's hard and hard to get into courts, it costs money this time, this time. and that's because the other side know how to run the tyranny, because they've done it for a long time. And they've got lots of historical examples. So when we kick up to say to a... To, to, uh, 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 a humble magistrate running a council tax session. The big picture is bigger, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. So if you want to talk about council tax, I'm going to whiz on that as well. Okay. Any questions? Let's get let's get, let's get the ball rolling. Any questions? What do you want to talk about? Rights to bear arms, police powers. <coughs> Go on. Council Sorry. Council tax. Okay. This is how council tax goes. The common law rule is is that taxation is by consent. It's not personal consent, it's collective consent from the whole kingdom. And that was one of the issues in the, in the, in the civil wars. In the civil wars in the 1600s, we experimented with two different ways of running the country, but both the same. The Stuart kings um, had problems raising taxes in Parliament, so what did they do? Recruit mercenary army, shut Parliament, carry on regardless. Okay. We have the civil war, round one. Puritans come out on top. What, what, what does Oliver Cromwell do? Has trouble raising taxes. He's got the new model army. Shuts Parliament. <coughs> borrows it. Sorry. Borrows it. Yeah, borrows it from Jews and Jews in uh, Jews France. in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You shouldn't have done it either. So, 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 so one, one of the one of the, one of the, one of the, the um, um, acts of Parliament which is still in force is called the Petition of Right, 1627. So, if you were to look up and again, I'll send you the link. Petition of Right, 1627. What that says is no taxation without common consent in Parliament. How does council tax work? It doesn't. There's no common consent. Because what the, what the Local Government Finance Act 1992 says, 
council's jail rose, council tax, and it'll be set by, who's it set by? The council, okay, no comments <coughs> there, yeah. So it's inherently wrong. Uh, and if you were to watch one of my videos called Starve the Beast, um, uh, which I did recently, um, it talk, talks about that. So what happens if, if, you, if you object to paying council tax? What, what measures are, are available to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, assassination, emigration. Section, thir th section 13A of the, of the Local Government Finance Act 1992, anyone, anyone 13A says is this, in 2003, the 1992 Local Government Finance Act was amended, and that means an amendment means approved. Um, and what happened was Parliament decided um, uh, uh, councils should have a general purpose power to give a discount for any reason to a per person's council tax. Discount for any reason, okay? What, was, what, what they had in mind was hardship, in, a, in actual fact, because there are hardship cases. Or let's say, for example, you, your, your house has been flooded and you haven't lived in it. Is, it. is it fair for you to pay council tax? So Section 13A says council may give a discount for any reason. Now you hear the word may, don't you, in, a, in Act of mm. Parliament, what do you think that means? Well, well, well. Yeah, half the class think must, half the, half the room think must, okay? Because when you're applying to a court to do something, uh, which, which is your lawful right, which is to have a discount, may means must, the council must consider your application. So what's the legal personality of a council? Is it a bunch of, bunch of overweight Freemasons? <laughs> no? <laughs> or, 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 yeah, okay, the legal personality of a, of a council is set by an Act of Parliament from, from uh, 1889. The Local Government Act 1889, Section 79 says, the council have, shall have the same responsibilities as the inhabitants of the county. Same responsibilities and duties that have to the county. So you live in a county and you feel bound by Magna Carta. Well, the council's bound by Magna Carta, isn't it? Okay, so the council's got the same legal personality. So when you apply to a, to a councillor, uh, let, let's say the Terrorism Act 2000. Have you heard of the Terrorism Act 2000? Yeah. There's a bit that says if, you're, if, if you knowingly fund terrorism, it's an offence, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, so if you object to council tax because you know the government's knowingly finds terrorism, and if nothing else, the VAT that the council pays goes to the central government, and we suspect a large proportion of council tax does. Um, that, then we, it's not a question if you uh, not wanting to pay council tax. It's unlawful for you to pay council tax. Okay, um, so, so a number of council tax resistors have seen on that. There's a man called Steve Spy. Um, we think he's, I, I think he's based in Brighton, I'm not sure. Manchester. Is it Manchester? Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's been successful recently. He's used some of my stuff, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 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 and can you think of some other reasons not paying council tax? I came across <laughs> something last night, which actually, it's a, it's a query on whether the council can prosecute anybody. Okay. Because they can only, on, this is under the Local Government Act 72, yep. mm -hmm. and it said that the council can only prosecute people mm -hmm. or act as a prosecutor for the interests of other persons. Okay. Well, the, like the residents, it meant the residents. And yeah, the they would argue that, of course, raising taxes that, to mend the roads is, um, is, uh, is in their interest. But strictly speaking, of course, it's the billing authority that, 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 that takes you to court, isn't it? Where I live in a, in a Welsh, Welsh county, Paris, it's the council, but, but around here it's the billing authority. I thought Rob road tax was for mending the roads. Sorry? Road well, well, whatever, yes, yeah, 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 good point, yeah, yeah, road tax for mending the roads. Okay, so, so, so the issue, issue is, what happens if you apply to the council for, uh, for a discount? They say no. They say no, okay, okay, and what, what, what does that mean? They've ignored an act of parliament, haven't they? What does that mean when you when you ignore the act, an act of parliament? Abuse of statutory procedures. Abuse of statutory procedures. Well, ba basically, basically, you're suspending the laws or the effects of the laws, aren't you? And what does Article One of the Bill of Rights say? The Crown may not suspend laws or the effects of the laws. Okay. So, what's the consequence of, uh, of uh, a law being suspended or ignored by any public body, a council, a policeman, or whatever? Is it treason? It's treason, yes, that's right, yeah, exactly, and it's treason, because the definition of treason is compassing the death of the sovereign in the legal sense or the physical sense, so in this case it's the legal sense of death, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's right. Um, and what does that make any judgment or, uh, that a court's arrived at? What, what, does that, what does that affect, how does that affect the status of a judgment that may have been made? It's not void. It's void of no effect, isn't it? Okay, it's void of no effect, because the Crown can do no wrong. So what that means is you, the, the Queen doesn't need number plates on her car, and you can't, can't trace it for no car tax, but equally, she hasn't got the power to break the law. And where's that, where does that all come from? What, what, what proves that the Queen can't, that can't, can't break the law? The oath. The oath is the trivia, and you can learn how to do it. And, and, and um, uh, we can fight the buggers of their own game. And the reason we can fight them is, the principal reason is because we can see them. Yeah? If you're a bad guy, 
being seen is the problem, isn't it? Because once you're seen, then you're getting a hand on the back of the neck, the collar, mm -hmm. don't you? Okay, and that's what we, what, what we aim to do. And being able to see them and expose them may be enough to restore the Constitution. It may be enough. Because the Constitution is based on what's right and what's wrong. Yeah, it's like murder. Nobody has to... You met an act of parliament says you must have murdered people. It's just out of order, isn't it? Okay, so whatever happened to the British Constitution, well, I've told, told, told you, haven't I? Uh, it's there, but it's hidden. So it's a training programme. Um, and the people that are hiding it are low empathy, low IQ, low height, in horrible yellow jackets. <laughs> okay, yeah. No hats, shaven heads. Strictly speaking, a shaven head is, uh, is contrary to the discipline code because it's an extreme hairstyle. Yeah? I don't like shaving heads, it's not yeah. on. Yeah. Sorry, it's, yeah, we are policemen, it's all right. Um, uh, I certainly don't like steroids, because you see them, don't you? Yeah? Yeah, what does that tell you? Yeah? Well, something wrong. <laughs> something wrong. Okay, right, here we go. So, whatever happened to the British Constitution? A little history, okay? Now, if we're going to take the other side on and say you've done a bad thing, um, we're going to have to have to prove it, aren't we? So we're going to have to use textbooks. So we've all heard of Blackstone's commentary, haven't we? Yep. Okay. So there's Lord, Lord, Lord Chief Justice Blackstone. Good man. There's a picture. Oh, missed it. There, there, there it is. Uh, there's a statue room in the Royal Courts of Justice. We were there only last week when we met Tina, and Rob was there as well. In the, in the, you know the big lobby, the big, big huge room, halfway down on the right. There he is. Okay, there we go. Right, a right of every Englishman is that of having applied to courts for aggressive injuries. Injuries. Okay. There's two sorts of courts, of course, aren't there? Civil courts are for um, um, settling out disputes between individuals, and the criminal courts when it's so bad that he thinks you, you should go to prison. You go to prison. Strictly speaking, common law courts don't have imprisonment as a, as a penalty. Common law courts have restitution. I'll put a video in the, in the email from, a, from a, uh, uh, an American chap that talks about that. Um, who, um, there we go. Since the law in England is the supreme arbiter of every man's life, liberty and property. Well, it's judge talking, isn't it? Okay. Public opinion is the supreme arbiter, isn't it? Public opinion is supported by the right to bear arms and the right to fight the buggers for it. Okay, so that's a judge talking. Every man's life, liberty and property. Courts of justice must at all times be open to the subject and the law be duly administered therein. We'd like to think that was so, wouldn't we? Mm. The Crown may not issue commands in disturbance of the law or disturb or delay common rights. And although such commandments should come, the judges shall not cease to do right, which is also made part of their oath. And by the Bill of Rights it's declared that the pretended power suspending or dispensing with the laws or the execution laws by regal authority of Parliament is illegal. So I've told you that, haven't you? When I, when I was in the army, there was a lesson on how to give lessons. Okay, and you need to bear this in mind when you're teaching other people. First you tell them what you're going to tell them. Then you tell them. Then you tell them what you told them. Okay? Agree, agree, agree. Okay. It's obvious really, isn't it? Rob's the soldier at the back, yeah. Okay, first you tell them, then you tell them what you tell them, then you tell them, then you tell you what you told them. And it sinks in. Okay. How do you get their attention? Okay. Crusty old sergeant major told me this. Well, something like that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Crusty old sergeant, sergeant told me this. Um, there was a man who was an expert in teaching donkeys to do tricks. And he was so good at teaching donkeys to do tricks, he gave lessons on that subject. So, one morning, he's got a donkey in the field and a class of students keen to learn. And he turns to the student and says, I always use kindness in my lessons. And then he turns and punches the donkey on the nose. And the donkey goes, eat or. And the instructor says, I know what you're thinking. The lesson hasn't started yet, but I've got the donkeys full and undivided by attention, haven't I? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so that's the secret. So, okay, they've, they've got a problem. They realise realize it's serious and you've got their full and undivided attention. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the donkey strategy. Judges shall not cease to do right, which is made part of their... Here's a lady, Dawn Oliver, okay? Meritorious Professor of Constitutional Law at University College London. Mm. Written loads of books, advised governments. Got huge amounts of taxpayers' money over the years. What does she know about Magna Carta? There's a good guess, yeah. This is her talking on the web, publicly. I assume I'm not the only public lawyer who's decided to read Magna Carta and some literature about it for the first time this year and found some surprises. <laughs> She's a fraud, isn't she? <laughs> okay. I, I challenged her on that. She's a barrister as well, and she claims not to read Magna Carta. And the reason is, in the late, late 60s, a lot of strange things happened. Uh, it's the run-up to joining the EU, um, and the Constitution was taken out of the examined part of the legal education syllabus. So you're a lazy lawyer, you know you're going to ask the exam questions on the Constitution, so you don't bother studying it, okay? So that's how you end up 40 years later with Dawn Oliver 
surprises in Magna Carta public. Okay. Now, I've sent her emails and she hasn't responded. Uh, 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 but uh, I'm, I'm trying to complain about it to the university authorities because she's a fraud. It's as simple as that. Yeah, okay. And what she's done is Magna Carta is a statute. Now, I, I was about to talk about the two sorts of statutes, wasn't I? Okay, we've got, we've got Act of Parliament and we've got what happened before 1297 when we had the first Parliament. What do you think happened? The king wanted to promulgate the law. Okay? The king has got a common law authority to restate the law. He can only restate the law, he can't create it. He can only restate the law, he can't create it. So, so, so where does he get the law from? He gets this from the judges. And where do the judges get the law from? They get it from decisions of juries. Okay? So the further you go back in time with your precedents, you go from modern law reports, which are done word by word on, on, on each court every day, to a summary in Victorian times, to earlier times where your only sources of law are history books. Uh, um, starting in the 1300s, the judges used to write yearbooks, so they, they'd write at the end of the year a summary of what happened in their court, and they would say, for example, we've noticed that every jury decides killing somebody without good reason is murder, therefore murder is against the common law. Okay? So the judge didn't create the law, he reported it. What do modern judges say about their powers in relation to creating law? They are the law. They say they can, don't they? Yeah. Okay. We've got to put them right, haven't we? We've got to put them right. Okay. So they can't can't do it. And of course, the way they get away with it is is that even the judges have to be taught properly. Have to be taught properly. Now the next question is: Who does constitutional law apply to? Does it apply to us? Well, no, it doesn't actually. When you look at it, it applies to officials. Everything in Magna Carta and Bill of Rights applies to officials. Officials must not do this. Officials must do that, doesn't it? It doesn't apply to us, with one exception, which I'll show you. Is it just officials? So I reinforce this point. Here's Magna Carta. For example, the men in our kingdom have and hold all the aforesaid liberties and concessions well and peaceably, freely and quietly, fully and wholly, from themselves and their heirs, of us and our heirs, in all respects and all places, forever, as aforesaid. And there's a reference from it. Okay, so for the rights, all the singular liberties and rights and liberties asserted and claimed in the said declaration are the true ancient and indubitable rights and liberties of the previous kingdom, and so should be esteemed, allowed, and judged, and deemed to be, and taken, and strictly observed, and in bold. And all officers and ministers whatsoever shall serve their majesties and their successors to the same in all times to come. Okay, so the Bill of Rights applies to, to, to officers and ministers, so, so, so does Magna Carta. Now, I'm going to tell you, tell you a short history of the Magna Carta Society. A man called Bob Lomas, uh, he's, he's, he's late 80s now, isn't he? He's, 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 uh, we went to see him the other day, he said, Buck up when you get old, son. Because <laughs> 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 uh, um, you can't do as much. Um, um, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's 1998, um, uh, and he'd, uh, he was in the army in the 50s. Um, he, he was a, a hedge layer by trade. Uh, 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 his hedges all very neat around his cottage, isn't he? Um, and um, he, he fl flirted with um, with the Conservative Party. UKIP came along and he joined them, and something must be done. And he realised that the issue isn't politics; it's law. So something must be done. So in 1998, the internet had just come along, and he was an early adopter for a, for a man of 60, 70 in that, that stage. Um, and uh, he founded the Magna Carta Society. And the role of the Magna Carta Society is to research the law relating to the Constitution and do something about it. Okay. Now I was a humble researcher. Um, as a policeman, not allowed to get involved in politics, can't, can't dispute that, is required to uphold the law. So if my senior management, uh, I was a bit discreet, I don't think they knew about it. Um, uh, if they ever challenged me, I would, I would, I would, I would defend myself vigorously. <laughs> okay. uh, in relation to the Firearms Act, for example, in 1990, we talked about Dunblane, where, where pistols were taken away. All policemen who had certificates were told, don't get, in, get involved in any political campaigns. Um, uh, at that point, every Met division had a, uh, had a rifle and pistol club. Um, and, and most policemen would, would, would know how to shoot a pistol, uh, if, if nothing else. And, and that, that dated back to 1900, when, uh, when the commissioner in 1900 decided we need to reserve a train men in case of an emergency. Um, as it happened, shortly after 2001, with the, uh, the, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the false flag in New York, um, they, 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 they sent a circuit around in the Met saying, anybody who knows how to shoot a rifle, would you like to volunteer to be a rifleman? A lot of us who had our pistols taken away said no because we're not going to corrupt the civil corrupt system. <laughs> there we go. Um, um, so so uh, Bob, Bob Lomas found, found the Magna Carta Society. We do some research and we discover uh, uh, Chapter 61. And Chapter 61 is the, is, the, is, the, is the right to rebel, acknowledged on paper, isn't it? So again, I'll send you a link about it. And what we did was 
we petitioned every member of the House of Lords to uphold hold, uh, the Constitution. Um, uh, and what Chapter 61 says is, if, if the members of the House of Lords agree with the petition, um, they can choose four of their number by lot to serve it on the Queen. And if the Queen doesn't comply within 40 days, then the Queen is out of the job. She's suspended, and the barons run the kingdom. So when you look at Magna Carta, you'll, you'll see that. And that's what happened in 2001. So lawful rebellion has been enforced since 2000, 2001. But how many people know about it? Not very many, unfortunately. <laughs> um, OK, I'll send you a circular about that, and there's various videos of me talking about it. So when... Uh, um, uh, um, when free men talk about law for rebellion, a lot of free men are in fact talking about chapter 61 and invoking it. Tina and I have gone into free men as free men is and come out the other side. And the reason we come out the other side is we don't disagree with the petition and, and the conclusion they come to, but they're not being effective in the courts. They're just getting 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 steamrolled. Um, so 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 the method I, I I I've come to is to use their own acts of parliament against them, their own statutes. So so we've talked about a statute pre pre. Um, pre-1297, pre um, uh, typically the king would sit down and, and say, well, I've been petitioned about this grievance, I'll do something about it, what I'll do is restate the common law, um, and that will be recorded. Um, Legislation.gov.uk, you've been on that website, a lot of you, you haven't yet. Legislation.gov.uk, replaced Her Majesty's Stationery Office, the way you proved an act of part was enforced was getting a printed copy from HMSO, and then at 12 years ago when, when Legislation.gov.uk comes out, that's how you prove it. Um, uh, and. Um, uh, I, I went through it once, and there, there are about 13, 13 of the old-style statutes on there. It doesn't say an act of parliament made at Westminster. It says a statute made by the king uh, in his council at Winchester, for example, if you do look at that. Um, 1297, parliament in its modern form evolves. Um, so an act of parliament is created by a matter, a bill, a list, is de debated by the commons, debated by the lords, and then the king or queen gives royal assent. So, that, so, so the royal assent just says, I've read this and it's okay. Okay. Elizabeth Sachs Coburg Gotha, okay, the present incumbent. Yeah. yeah, she's she's a problem to us, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, because that's right. She hasn't followed her oath. There we go. Um, uh, and the reason she hasn't followed her oath, we're not sure. Uh, 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 but if you look at the coronation films, and I'll send some, some links to them, the films of the coronation, she is really young. Uh, she was she was educated by a Fabian. Uh, her professor of history was a Fabian. Um, and the other thing is the royal family have got got uh, chronically low IQ, haven't they? Yeah, uh, chronically low IQ due to interbreeding. Um, so, so, so um, he has let the side down badly. Uh, and um, I mean, Brian, Brian, Brian Gerrish, we all know Brian Gerrish, don't we? For a retired naval officer, he's even more outspoken than I am. He calls her, he calls her, he calls her Elizabeth the useless. There we go. Right. Okay. So we talked about Magna Carta Bill of Rights. They apply to officials. Here's a measure that applies to private persons. Okay. Now most of us get oppressed, oppressed by uh, by officials, don't we? So, so we can say the constitutional laws apply to officials, but occasionally we get oppressed by a private person. Let, let's, for example, a private parking contractor. Okay. What they do is they, they they threaten to fine you without a conviction, don't they? Yeah. Okay. So does the constitution apply to a private person? So let's have a little. You know what's coming. It does. Here we go. So the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act. Just a quick lesson on on how you interpret an act of Parliament. Interpret means understand. Um, uh, uh, the first thing is there's, there's a thing called the Interpretation Act 1978, which I'll, I'll send a link to, um, and it's, it's, it says words will have their own ordinary and natural meaning unless it's defined elsewhere in the Act, uh, okay, uh, uh, which is common sense really. But it, well, the, Crown, uh, the, uh, the, the Interpretation Act 1978 also says every Act is to be taken judicial notice of. So they can't cherry pick Acts they don't like, okay? So they can't look at the Firearms Act and says, oh, it doesn't mention Bill of Rights in here. We'll ignore the Bill of Rights and say you can't have a weapon. They've got to, they've got to read both. And the Bill of Rights says, yes, you can have a weapon. We'll talk about that in more, but I think a few more people are interested in that. So what, what we've got is a measure of the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act. So a bit of history here. Um, you remember I, said, remember I said the title of the kingdom is set by trial by battle? So it happened in 1215, didn't it? Um, the barons rise up. Um, and when they rise up, uh, the first thing they do is re re renounce their allegiance. Now, as a soldier and a policeman, I, I thought it was for life. Yeah. Well, strictly speaking, soldiers for life, isn't it, Rob? Policeman, it says, while well, I hold the office. So I thought the oath was... Uh, well, until, uh, until the Lisbon Treaty, the nullified all military orders passed. Yeah, that's another story. Yes, indeed. Um, uh, 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 I, I thought of the oath for life, and there's no way of getting out of it. There's no way of getting out of it. Lord Hawhall, for example, who was an Englishman who went across to uh, Germany in World War II and had a prop uh, ran a propaganda radio station, 
um, uh, got topped, didn't he? He got hung. He was Irish. He's Irish. Yeah, yeah another reason. Yeah, that's right. Well, he, had, he had a British passport at one point, apparently. No, he applied for British passport. Did he? And he didn't get it? Yeah. Oh, so he was... Oh, well, he shouldn't have been hung, though, did he? Yeah, technical detail. Right, OK. Um, see, see, see what rubber gates, do you see? We, 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 um, I remember reading a book about an expert system. Uh, uh, an expert system is a computer program that's got distilled knowledge to predict the topic. And everyone in this room is now part of an expert system, aren't they? And we're, 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 we're sharing our ideas. There's, there's a theory about the spread of ideas, which I put to the young man there. Um, when you worry about something, you wake up, the first people you talk to are your trusted friends. Because they won't take the mickey too much and they won't drop you in it. Okay? And if you convince your friends there's a problem and they agree, they will tell their trusted friends, which is a slightly different circle, isn't it? So ideas spread. So that's what we're doing. So, 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 so although I mean, Tina and I got seven children between us, my four completely awake. Sorry, completely asleep. Beg your pardon. Tina's three are awake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my, my lot. My, my, my son's a commercial airline pilot, and he came to visit us in Wales. And Tina said, "What about these chemtrails?" And he said, "What's a chemtrail?" His <laughs> girlfriend is a dental hygienist. So I said, "What do you think of all right?" It's really good for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, yeah. Okay, that's, that's what I'm up against. So it'd be funny if it wasn't so serious. Uh, okay, so we've got the current kind of Parliament Recognition Act. So you interpret an act of Parliament, and the first clue is the short title. Okay, so the long title, this is all on legislation.gov.uk, you can find it. Long title, an act for recognising King William and Queen Mary and for avoiding all questions touching the acts made in the Parliament assembled at Westminster, 13th day of February 1688. So, 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 so it's 12.15, um, and uh, the Barons, Barons, uh, it's called diffidatio. Diffidatio is the, is the common law concept of withdrawing your allegiance. And if you want to hear a spooky story, I, I knew vaguely about it, but I didn't didn't have a reference. So so it's three Christmases ago. T we, there's a local bookshop in Brecon, an antiquarian bookshop, and Tina, Tina goes in. I stand outside, and the bloke knows Tina, and he, he knows she can't see. <coughs> I want a Christmas present. I want a, a, a book on constitutional law. So he gets three books on constitu constitutional law, antique books out. And Tina hovers her hand over the first one. No, not that one. Not that one. Third one. Wraps it up, takes it home. Christmas Day, I open it, and it falls open. And guess what? The article. Diffidatio. And I said, ah, <laughs> I'm going to use this. Okay. And diffidatio is the common law concept that you can go and see a vicar re 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 renounce your allegiance. Because it goes like this. Boys of 12 were taken to the manor court um, and introduced by their father to the lords of the manor. And they were swear allegiance. Uh, and then the, the hierarchy, the lords of the manor, were swear allegiance to the crown at some point. Okay. If the boy decided at a later date that the, the Lord, had, Lord had, was no good, he could go and withdraw allegiance. And if, it was the, if, if he withdrew allegiance, he was entitled to be escorted to the edge of the, the, of the, the Lord's lands, unharmed, and he could sign, sign up to another Lord. Um, and if he was, he, was, he was giving up allegiance to the Crown, um, he, he could be escorted to the coast and go to another country. But it's 12.15 in May, the, bar, the barons rise up. There's only about 50 barons in the country at that time. 40 of them rise up against King John, because he's what we now know as a, now as a psychopath, I'm sure. Um, and they go and see a... a, a um, a vicar, in, I think it was Wendover, uh, and, and, and they swear they, they, they withdraw their allegiance. And that way they're not traitors. <coughs> that way are not traitors. And then the rule on title to kingdom is set by trial by battle kicks in. Um, so they surround Windsor Castle. You know, you know the story. King John, King John counts the number of knights uh, 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 camped out outside Windsor Castle. Um, he, he knows how many mercenaries he's got, and he's not very many because he's run out of money. <laughs> okay? Uh, in those days they had heralds. Um, if you think of Henry V, the, uh, the, uh, the, the Shakespeare, Shakespeare play, just before the Battle of Agincourt, a herald, a Frenchman, with a fancy tabard looking like a playing card, says, says to the king, I've counted, you're going to lose, there's 20,000 of them and only 6,000 of you. And, 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 and uh, uh, Henry V sends them on his way. So I'm sure that happened in 1215. So there's no dishonour in yielding. So John, John comes out um, and uh, they have a meeting, it lasts a week, and eventually, eventually what we now know of Magna Carta is written. It's based on a previous document called Articles of the Barons. Um, and John puts his seal to it. In those days, it didn't matter if the king was c king couldn't read and write because he was so posh, he had people to do that for him. <laughs> but he was equipped with a big seal. Um, and it's important that we maintain our common law standards because seals and courts are an important issue, aren't they, Rob? Yeah, the, how do you validate a document? You, know, you validate it with a seal, don't you? Uh, so, so, so trial by battle settled it in 1215, and it go forward to 1688, the same thing happened. James II uh, was the king. Uh, he wanted to go the country to go Catholic. He tried various ploys. He tried to persuade the, uh, the bishops to, uh, to, to go along with his, uh, his, uh, his campaign. And one day he issued a, um, uh, a memorandum to the bishops saying, tell the, read this out in church next Sunday in every church in the land. Tell the country we're going Catholic. And the bishops said no, basically. So he locked them up in the tower. <laughs> but it cra cra they were released after, after a week. 
um, and he created a, uh, a furor, and in the end, James II decided that, that he didn't want to have his head cut off as his grandfather, Charles I, uh, first had, so he fled to France. Um, on the first occasion, he tried to escape a fisherman whose, whose boat he tried to hire, realised who he was, and made a citizen's arrest. And the king had to send a message down saying, no, let him go. <laughs> the uh, parliament had to send a message down saying, let him go, so he escaped to France. Um, and if the king's gone to France, you can't pass acts of parliaments, can you? Because uh, an act of parliament, commons, lords, and king. Okay? So that's what happened in 1688. The population got together and they had a constitutional convention. And the, con the con context of the constitutional convention were the ingredients of the last parliament but one. Because James II, in his last parliament, he, he put MPs in according to what he wanted them to do. So they were Catholics, so, that, so, so they were supporting Catholicism. So you've got a parliament where it was all corrupt. Um, so, 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 so the, uh, the uh, leading members of the House of Lords decided, well, we're not going to use the, the current parliament, we'll go to the one before. Um, and they had, a, they had a meeting and they debated and they, they wrote a document called the Declaration of Rights. There were 13 subjects, they're known as 13 heads of grievance. So going forward to 2001, so it was about 2000, and, and uh, yours truly is doing research on, on, that, on, on, the, on, the, on what happened in the, in the Glorious Revolution. Um, and we, we ring up the House of Lords Library and they didn't have the text of the Declaration of Rights. They couldn't tell us what it was. And that's an outrage, isn't it? Okay, because it's one of our fundamental constitutional documents. The Declaration of Rights in America is, is, is kept in a, in a vault on a pillar, glass pillar that goes up and down into the floor and it's hidden at night and, and children are, are take, you know, take to see it. But we didn't have a copy. So, so a, man called, a man called John Bingley, um, uh, um, uh, uh, he had a company that was manufacturing bullets, Bingley bullets, 38 caliber premium bullets, and it was closed down when, when, when Dunblane happened because uh, his business was demolished, so he was a bit aggrieved. It was half a million pound machine, apparently. So he, he, uh, he goes up to Parliament and he gets a copy of the Declaration of Rights. It's a parchment scroll, 30, eight sheets, 32 feet long. Two thirds of it was rolled up, and, and a third, a third was, uh, was uh, sewn to, sewn to a, um, a piece of card. Uh, because it's been exhibited on its 200th anniversary, 100 years previously. So he photographs it and we get the transcript. Okay? So, so, so what ha ha happens is, it's 1688, um, the next in line is Mary. Okay? King James II's daughter was Mary. Um, she was married for women, women in Orange. Common law women are property. When you, man, when, married, when you married a woman, you, you, you took over her property as well. So the man she was married to, William, William of Orange, was entitled to joint, joint kingship. So, so William Orange is a keen Protestant, and he's particularly keen to fight the Muslims. In uh, fact, which is topical, isn't it? Okay. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but in, in 1683, the Muslims reached as far as the gates of Vienna. It was halfway through Europe. Okay, it was a close rush thing. A Polish army, a large Polish army, cavalry army, they've got a long tradition of cavalry armies, arrived in the nick of time um, and, 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 and saw off the Muslims from the gates of Vienna. Uh, and, 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 and if that hadn't happened, we'd be... Um, Circumcised and plain to Allah, wouldn't we? <laughs> even, even, even today. Uh, close front, close front. Yes, that's right, you think I'm joking. Uh, men and women, yeah. Uh, 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 and um, uh, uh, William Orange, it suited him to have the British on board his campaign to resist, resist the Muslims. So it was in his interest to come over and take, take over the kingship of uh, the United Kingdom as well, what well, Great Britain was then, then known. Um, and uh, he, uh, he, he wrote various letters backwards and forwards. And my favourite one is a document called reasons for appearing in arms in England. So he's appearing with an army in England. Not that meaning of the, the, the word arms. Um, it's a job specification for MPs. It could have been written yesterday because it says, the problem with Parliament is it's been packed with cronies of the King um, and uh, the, the, the MPs make promises to do things on behalf of their people and they get to Parliament and they don't. Yeah, <laughs> it could have been written yesterday, couldn't it? Yeah, okay. Now, um, uh, the, 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 the reasons for appearing in arms in England is in fact a job specification for MPs and it said they should be independent. And that's the reason why in the Bill of Rights it's got, it's got a prohibition on, on the whipping system. One of the articles of the Bill of Rights, as you probably know, says debates in Parliament shall be free. So by definition, party whips are unlawful. Okay, contrary to the Constitution. Contrary to the Constitution. They've got away with it for years because nobody's known, have they? Yeah, present company accepted. Um, so so um, William come, comes across, and there's a bit of a ceremony in the banqueting house, uh, which, is a, which is a fancy building in Whitehall. Um, it, it's outside of which Charles I had his head chopped off, coincidentally. Um, and uh, the Speaker of the House of Lords reads out the Declaration of Rights to William and Mary and says, will you rule the kingdom according to these, these, these rules? Uh, and the, the rules are now recorded in the Bill of Rights. So again, I'll send you a link to the Bill of Rights. Bill means list of rights, rights of the subject. Um, now, <laughs> um, 
there very, may very well have been a ceremony in, in the Mansion House, and the, the you know posh people may have assembled and read something out. But it wasn't the Parliament, was it? Because the, because they had a Commons, they had a Lords, but they didn't have a, a King. Okay, but that's cause that, that that ceremony was considered to be the heart of the revolution. What that did was the people rose up, fought the King militarily, or they didn't have to have a battle because he did a bunk. Um, uh, and that settled the matter, and so the people transferred their allegiance to the new sovereign. Okay. Now, uh, one of the videos I'm going to circulate with you is the coronation ceremony in, in, in 1953, and the key to it is the population, or the, the, the estates of the realm are assembled in, in, in uh, Westminster Abbey, and the Queen is led round, and she's introduced to the four corners the four, of the building, and then, then, then the, uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury says, says, says to the audience, will you have Elizabeth as your sovereign? And as he does that, what does Elizabeth do? Curtsies. Okay, okay, and that proves that the people are sovereign. So when you get a modern politician says Parliament sovereign, you show him the video and say no, Queen sovereign, and she, she curtsied just before she got the job, and it also proves proves she she was elected. She was elected. Now they didn't brandish their weapons; they were too polite to do it in church. Okay, perhaps, but uh, uh, it proves what we're saying. Saying is that the medi the uh, the the Saxon tradition of the Witan and voting for the king and that sort of thing continues to the present day, and then she takes the oath. Okay, so long title. Let's go on to the next one. Here's what, he said, what, what it actually says. This is the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act. All and seemingly acts made and acted in the said Parliament were and are the laws and statutes of this kingdom, and as such ought to be reputed taken and obeyed by all the people of the kingdom. So what it's saying, yesterday, you notice the date change, it goes from 1680 to 1689. The reason is, um, the, 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 you know the modern financial year begins in April. That's because the, the year did begin in April until the Gregorian calendar came in. So it caused a bit of confusion about the dates. Okay, so we've got an act of parliament, all and singular, ought to be about all the people of the kingdom. So you get a private parking person that tries to screw you for uh, 85 quid for parking on the outside of Sainsbury's. Um, uh, it's suspending the law's effective law because there's been no no uh, no judgment against you, has it? Has that? So there's another tool to use. Okay. <coughs> right. It's not the next one. I've talked about the interpretation act, haven't I? There we are. I'm repeating myself. You just notice every act is a public act to be judicially noticed as such, unless the contrary is expressly provided in the act. So they can't pick and choose acts of parliament they don't like. Statutes they don't like, because there are two sorts of statutes. Remember you saying? Acts of parliament, debating parliament, given the royal assent. Statute, restatement of the law, Magna Carta 1215, Declaration of Rights. Now there's also something to bear in mind. Um, uh, we, we, we're entitled to rely on the, the, the 1215 version of Magna Carta, the trial by battle outside Windsor Castle, King John, what have you. But in 1297, the first Parliament put it on a statutory, on an Act of Parliament basis as well. So there's an Act of Parliament basis as well. So when somebody says Magna Carta isn't, isn't a statute, it is, because it's a 1297 version. Now, you remember I said some, some very suspicious things happened in the 1960s. It's the run-up to joining the EU, and I suspect senior legal figures knew that uh, they might have some problems with awkward sods like our ancestors. I to, well, my father was asleep, but he didn't know any better. Um, uh, uh, at, at school at that stage, there was no level on the British Constitution. And what I've taught you was, <coughs> was if you did the O level, you'd know it, wouldn't you? Okay, of course, they, said, they, they soon got rid of that one when the national curriculum came in. Okay, so here we've got 1297. And the wording, for example, is exactly the same as the, as the original. No man, frankly, you may be taken or imprisoned or wanted to cease to be freehold, etc., etc. Okay. Now let's, let's imagine what happens. We've discussed it already. What, what happens if, uh, if, if a, a court done something they shouldn't do? The first thing is, and I did I, until I was part way through my service. When I had about twelve years in, I was a federation rep. There was an election, and I was federation rep all of a sudden. So I suddenly ended up defending people rather than prosecuting. Okay, the first thing I learned, the first thing I learned was the federation is stuffed with Freemasons. Um, and uh, when, when, I, when I joined uh, the police, my dad, dad was a policeman. He gave me two pieces of advice. It's two people, you don't, two groups you don't have anything to do with. The first one was the Salvation Army. Okay. The reason is they're into uniforms, discipline, and wife swapping. And he didn't approve. <laughs> I missed out. <laughs> Sorry, <Tina. laughs> um, and, the, and the second, second, second one was Freemason. So I was groomed three times. So I looked the part, then I, you know, you know, I was groomed three times, and I let it run, investigate as much as possible. And then I said I couldn't possibly do that. And I'm, uh, 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 it's stuff for them. It's uh, in my day. But one of the things I will say is, and this is an anecdote from personal experience, they may not be as strong as they once were. Okay. So it's it's about ten years ago. 
And the senior, senior um, Freemason on my division is a PC, but he's higher in rank than the superintendent. Okay, now political correctness has come in, and they've got this new recruiting campaign. The PC's son reaches the age of 18 and he wants to join the police. So he applies and he's told, no quota for white people. And they were quite blatant about it. No quota for white people. So the, 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 his father pulled all the, all the um, Masonic strokes to try and get him in and failed. Years ago that wouldn't happen, so I think that's good news. Okay. I don't approve of the policy though. Now there's a hero that not many people know about. There's a lady called Shirley Leeward. She's an ancient looking lady. Uh, uh, came, to, came, to, came to be a, a, a solicitor later in life um, and a, achieved some high qualifications. Okay? Um, I've got to say she's paid the price. She's been handed out to the legal profession. And the reason she's been handed out to the legal profession is this document that she's, she's written. It's called the Void Order. Okay? Now, the, the concept of the Void Order is, is in fact recognised in Chapter 61 of Magna Carta. And the King says, if any of my officials have cheated on any of the above rules, it shall be void and of no effect. And the reason for that is, is the king can do no wrong. So he can't if he tried. Okay? That's where the void order comes from. So, so, so there's all the qualifications. Good lady. And this is the preamble to, to her. Um, the interesting important nature of a void order of a court is not fully understood and appreciated in England. This article is written to assist the understanding of a void order. To assist legal professionals, any concerns they may have submitting it to a court. But its order is void, if indeed, and if indeed it is void. And I understand what she's done, she's researched the American system, okay? Because you remember I said Americans are Englishmen who kept their rights better than we did? Yeah? So she's done research based on America. And what I've, I've found recently is, is that um, there are a number of common law, common law countries around the world. They're all descended from us. Um, um, and the, there was a judgment uh, about ten years ago that said Magna Carta fold the flag. And because Magna Carta fold, fold the flag is a uh, flag, Decisions of the Supreme Courts in other countries, other common law countries, should be binding here. It's just that nobody raises it, okay? Because lawyers don't know about it because they're not taught the, they're not asked exam questions on it. Um, so, 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 so the case to do with Magna Carta follows the flag. I'll explain it so, so, so you don't remember it. It's called Ex Parte Bancu, and Bancu is a, 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 a an islander on on Ascension Island. You heard of Ascension Island, a little island in the, in the Atlantic. The Americans wanted to use as a runway to go and bomb somewhere. They're all bombing places, aren't they? Um, uh, and uh, it, it was a British territory. Uh, it had been captured, captured by, by Britain. Uh, and you remember it said title and settled by tribal battles. So it had been captured. It was probably a, a losing fight, you know, in that Royal Naval Ship versus Latin natives. <laughs> there we go. Um, and uh, the, the, the British government uh, gave the Americans a 30-year lease to build a big runway to go and bomb somewhere. Um, and and, and, and uh, after a number of years, 20 years later, Mr. Banku, who is one of the displaced islanders, goes to the High Court. It's one of the occasions where the High Court in the Strand did the right thing. Um, and what they did, they established that Magna Carta follows the flag. Um, and I'll put a link to the judgment in, in my email. And, and, and if you, it's a, it's a long judgment, but um, the, the way to prove that Magna Carta is valid is, is if you, um, you know the find button on most word processors? If you put Magna Carta in the find button in Banku, you'll find loads of references to it. At one point, the judge says to a barrister, surely you're not arguing that Magna Carta can be repealed? And the barrister says, oh, no, sorry. Things like that. Very useful, very useful to our cause. So ex party Banku verified that Magna Carta follows the flag. Um, and, and that's, that's, that's the, chain of the legal argument is, is that the Supreme Court judgments. Now, in America, they've got a case called Marbury against Madison. Okay, it's, it's, it's 1805. And what Mar Mar Marbury against Madison said is that, is that um, if Congress passes a statute which is contrary to the Constitution, it's, it's not a statute and therefore it's void. Remember the Constable, well, the king can, king can do, do no wrong, King can do no wrong. Marbury against Madison, and we haven't had a Marbury against Madison. We haven't yet had, had, had a test case where the, the validity of an Act of Parliament has been tested. Now, the courts don't like it because they say the court doesn't have power to go against an Act of Parliament. But the correct argument is if, if they're presented something and it's established it is an Act of Parliament, they're not going against it, are they? It's just not an Act of Parliament. You see the, see the leap? They say we can't go an Act of Parliament, and we're saying we're not, we don't want you to go an Act of, against an Act of Parliament. We just say, if it's not an act of parliament, you're not going against it. Okay. So here's Shirley, Shirley Lee will talk again. Shirley Lee will avoid all the results from a fundamental defect in proceedings, up John Lord Justice and Reed Pritchard deceased. Without jurisdiction, ultra various act of a public boss body or, or judicial office holder. Okay, so fundamental defect. What's the fundamental defect? What's the definition? Later in the article. 
A fundamental division includes where proceedings appear to be judicially referred to comply with the statutory requirements. Statutory requirement. Now, we've talked about council tax, haven't we? And I've talked about section 13A, which says the council may give a discount, and you apply for a discount and the council ignore you and go straight to enforcement. What have they done? They've ignored a statutory requirement, haven't they? So it's void. There we go. Just amplify this. So the judgment they're talking about is Pritchard. A fundamental in the proceedings will make the whole proceedings a nullity. A nullity cannot be waived. You can't say, okay, you can do that. It's never too late. No statute of limitations. And the person affected by a voider has the right ex debitu just to have it set aside. Okay, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but you can, okay? And once we start doing that on a, on a large scale, then the other side realise they've got a problem, don't they? Okay, that's the end of that presentation. Any questions? If you're not careful, I'll start asking you questions. <laughs> yes? Yeah? Right. Go on. A couple of issues here. Some we found, actually, you know, we, we, this information is not very deep. You get a copy of the secretary, if the guy comes to meet, the guys comes to meet, the secretary of the Botanica, you get a copy pre-EU, so it means in there. And we found out from there, the Queen, as this Queen we've got now, is the first monarch of the United Kingdom. Parliament became the Parliament of the United Kingdom in 1811, the monarch stayed the monarch of Great Britain until 1953. This monarch's the first monarch of the United Kingdom. And that's out of a encyclopedia Britannica. You can't yeah. go to court as evidence, by the way, as expert, expert witness. Yeah. Okay. Well, right, gentlemen there, yeah. I'm just uh, it's just a call. Master Leslie up at the Royal Court. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. He's good in parts, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, actually, he actually stated, uh, comes to somebody, that Parliament reigns supreme. Okay, now the answer yeah. to that, I'll ask that um, there's, a, there's a school, school of lawyerism called Diceism. Diceism, and you heard the phrase that's a bit dicey. Yeah, yeah, okay, it means it's a bit dodgy, doesn't it? Okay, um, uh, so um, uh, the answer if you look at Dice, Dice, Dice is a professor of law at the Oxford University. He writes a series of books on the Constitution over about 30 years and he changes his position. Okay, and towards the end, he decides that uh, uh, par Parliament isn't supreme because, because, because if it came to it, the population could, could resist un unjust laws. Okay, I've got the, got the reference to that. He's actually the Queen's master, isn't he? Yeah, that's right, yes. He would, so he would, he would say that. So, so if you look at my video on the right to bear arms, I actually talk about that. I talk about di di dicey and lawyer cell, Parliament can do what it's like. And and just one other point. Yeah. When you look at the word, because a lot of these arbitrary decisions, you used to talk about tyranny before. Yeah. Arbitrary is actually a tyrannical decision. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Arb arbitrary is ty tyranny. Yeah, okay. So, uh, gentlemen at the back, yeah? Yeah, I just want to ask, Parliament ain't sovereign. But the city of London, the square mile, they they're not bound down by the same laws as we have it. Yes, that, that's, so that's right. That's, so that's a huge mass problem because nobody's challenged. Yeah, that, that's right. Nobody's challenged it. And, and, and the issue is, so, so the issue is, what is the status of the Parliament? Unfortunately, they're recognised by a royal charter in 1066 because 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 uh, um, William the Bastard came over from France was shrewd enough, uh, and it's never been changed, hasn't it? So so again, uh, the, the the powers of um, the city of London. They're an institution that kept its right better than we did. Well, it's the city yeah. of London Corporation. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and I agree. The, the guy who sits behind the Speaker, yeah. the House of Commons, the is remember, the yeah. yeah. and he's the one who says when yeah, that's the right. laws are going to so, pass. So one of our jobs is, 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 to, is, to, is to do that, isn't it? Yeah. Is, they, they, they've kept the rights better than we have. So one, one of the issues is is to, is, is to um, uh, have a new constitutional settlement uh, and take away that privilege. So, yeah. Yep. Actually, writing a new constitution now. Uh, well, they've got no authority. They've got no authority. They are, though, they? Uh, they are. But they, they are. They, they will write an act of parliament. It'll have the same status as the Bill of Rights, in force until the next bunch of politicians come along and repeal it. So it's not. It's you know, it's toilet paper as far as I'm concerned. Um, having said that, Rob's done some good work on the on the Human Rights Act, haven't you? Um, uh, and Rob's argument, if correct me if I'm wrong, is is that our common law rights, also known as liberties, are in fact acknowledged in in, in the Human Rights Act. You say, wouldn't you, Rob? Well, the Human Rights Act, uh, sorry, prior to the Human Rights Act, what the Constitution did was we were responsible for defending our rights and liberties and the courts were there to assist us. Yep. Clever trick they did with the Human Rights Act is they turned around. Mm -hmm. we're no longer, we've, we've no longer got the ability to defend ourselves and defend our rights and freedoms. We've got to go to any state to ask them to defend the freedoms that they allow us, that the rights they allow us. And it's a complete fundamental switch over. Yep. The Human Rights Act needs to be yeah, it, 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 it does. Um, there's a thing called a relator action. I don't know if you come across it. The Attorney General is the Crown's principal law officer. He or she um, can assist people claiming their rights. Um, so Tina and I have tried that, haven't we? Um, uh, 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 
I did five grand juries in uh, in in in, in earlier, earlier in the year, and I've I've, su I've submitted the results of the grand juries down various different routes. And one of them was to go to the attorney general and say, "Look here, common law right to do this, do this. Uh, it's being infringed by police forces. Right to bear arms like that, but that one." Um, uh, what can you what, what can you do to do about it? And you get a letter back from the from the uh, um, attorney general's office, and it's got a two page document which is their their legal opinion on on the um, obligation of the attorney general to support you. And interesting uh, enough, the the, the 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 precedents they quoted are pre the glorious revolution. Um, as an example, um, before you can get the attorney general to assist you, you have to have an opi opinion to that effect from a barrister, which is going to cost you three grand. So so so. Uh, Magna Carta says um, to know and we'll sell justice. Yeah, no, you, you've got that about opinion. And when you when you look at the uh, look at the details, the authority that uh, the Attorney General relies on, it goes back to 1610. And apparently, the the uh, Attorney General in 1610 said, "I've always asked the gentleman of the bar, and that's the barrister, always asked the gentleman of the bar to uh, to give an opinion." And it's not based on anything; it's just something he's done. It's not it's not it's not it's not settled by a court. It's just a load of lawyers have got together. Um, the thing that you have to bear in mind: lawyers they're Jewish largely. Um, uh, and I had dealings with Jewish people on my. At one, one point, I had a beat for five years, called a permanent beat, and there was a synagogue on my beat. Uh, um, and so I got to meet the Jewish people. Okay, um, the first time I met them, uh, the council put a uh, speed bump outside it, um, and um, uh, uh, a friend, of, friend, of, friend of the synagogue, uh, clearly ex-army, sort of called me in, and he said, "It's a problem." He said, "Problem." He said, uh, "If somebody wants to do a drive-by shooting, it, it'll make it ob make it." Obvious because everybody has to slow down, and I thought I bet the highways department haven't thought of that. That's another reporting house. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, got to got to meet them, and, and they use Talmudic logic. logic okay, uh, and the ta Talmudic logic is 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 the, is the opposite of the Western scientific method. Talmudic logic. A lot of scholars get together and they argue, and eventually somebody falls out because they're exhausted <laughs> or whatever. Um, and whatever they decide is then the new policy, the new law. For example, Freudian psychology was achieved like that. Uh, the Western, Western system is a scientific method where you observe the world, you, you, you formulate a theory, it's tested by your peers, um, and, uh, and it's repeatable. Uh, so so the, court, the, the courts, because it's their stuff with Jewish people, um, who've educated on the Talmudic system, um, uh, a lot of their arguments are, are, are like that, aren't they? And there's a, there's a good example. Okay, any, any more questions? Um, it wouldn't be our peers then, surely? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, trial by our peers, yes, that's, that's right. Well, yeah. then they, they've got another, uh, if they're involved in other uh, ideologies, they're not our peers. Are well, they? the, pro the problem with Jews is the common injury. Uh, um, uh, observant Jews are required to go to church once a year, once a, uh, talk, uh, synagogue once a year, and they swear the common injury oath <coughs> says, I revoke any oath I made last year, I revoke any revoke, uh, oath I make it in the next year. So, again, I'll send you the link to the common injury. Uh, and what it, what it means is they can't be trusted. Um, because in their in their in their in their, uh, in their uh, ideology, um, um, uh, Jews are humans and the rest of us are goyim. And goyim oh, means correct, to, yes, yeah, yes, two-legged yes. soulless animal can be killed, raped, murdered. You know, uh, uh, no, no no crime for a Jew. Um, uh, and um, they can't have any leaven in their houses. That's anything to do with yeah. yeast or, yeah. or rising. So at the end of yeah. clearing everything out, they yeah. actually sell to a non-Jew any leaven they've got in the house, even a speck of what have you, yeah. and he pays them and goes yeah. away and he owns everything that's left. So they haven't met, i.e. that to me is deceitful because you haven't got rid of everything. So yeah, that well, well that's right, and, and, and the, 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 the problem is in actual fact they were excluded around about 12, 15 anyway from the kingdom and they only came back in uh, when Oliver Cromwell short money for the new model army and went and borrowed money and got the money lenders as well. Um, and, and, and then William of Orange, Freemason, uh, Bank of England, um, Jewish Jewish institution, uh, uh, and and of course we down to this present day they're a problem to us, aren't they? Yeah, yeah yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. The, the answer is psychopaths. I noticed a lot of people have, uh, have studied the psychopaths. One of my few regrets from my police service is didn't know about psychopaths. Met lots of them, nicked them, <laughs> sat across the interview room from them. Didn't know what was going on. Okay, um, uh, and I think that's deliberate because what what happened what, what was the history history of psychopaths and, and how they were treated is. Um, in earlier times, uh, a village might tolerate an idiot, but they wouldn't t t tolerate a child molester, would they? No. They'd get killed, basically. Yeah, the bitch walks or whatever at dawn. Um, uh, um, uh, in Victorian times, they're enlightened, so they, they, they build huge, huge uh, mental hospitals. The plan is exactly the same with the prisons, how starfish shape, as it happens. If there was a big hospital at Springfield, was, a, was an exact, uh, in South London, was the model of Worm of Scrubs, for example. Uh, not Worm of Scrubs, um, uh, Pentonville. Um, uh, and um, uh, uh, a person who was a, what we now call a psychopath was known as a moral imbecile. 
Okay. Now, um, imbecile, dolt, uh, cretin, and so on are technical terms which relate to IQ, uh, strictly speaking. Uh, and and uh, what we now call a psychopath was known as a moral imbecile. Uh, it, it, it meant that it meant that, 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 that emotional intelligence, perhaps you describe it now, uh, it was so low that, that he couldn't be trusted and he was locked up for life. So they didn't kill him, they locked him up for life, didn't they, moral imbeciles? Mm -hmm. And that lasted until the 1960s, when for some reason the, 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 the establishment decided that um, if you've got somebody who's a mental patient and you can't provide treatment, you haven't got grounds for keeping them. So they're released, you know, they're released into the population. So the Moors murderers, they, they were clearly psychopaths, they'd never been in prison. But, uh, but they weren't in risk of being in prison. And policemen were never taught about psychopaths. Okay. So, so, so I, sorry. I've sat across the table from, um, um, in, in, interviewed a man uh, uh, who, who was a white beater, um, and there's no doubt about it, a serial white, white beater. He's been arrested by his neighbours, in actual fact, so a rough housing estate in, in, in West London, and uh, neighbours heard the screams and kicked the door down and arrested him, and he's sitting across the table from me with a fat lip. It wasn't me, it was the, uh, the neighbours. Um, <laughs> Uh, and um, uh, uh, gave a no comment interview and then I switched the tape off and, and he leaned across on the table the bitch deserved it and I couldn't hit him because it was listed there <laughs> um, um, that, that sort of person and, and I've wasted my time going down the criminal route with him I should have gone down the mental health route I now know I should have gathered evidence that he was, he was a, a mental health issue and should have locked him up on that basis and I think that's deliberate they, didn't, they don't tell police about psychopaths because psychopaths rise to the top in the hierarchy don't they? That's, that's what happens because they've got a selective advantage. You imagine the First World War general, for example. First of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's the plan? Oh, walk towards the machine guns. Uh, we did that last week at a massacre. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that sort of thing. My, my, my generation were altruistic. Um, uh, you, you, you know. We, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the first commissioner, the first Met commissioner, is, uh, um, was, was influenced by Sir Robert Peel, uh, who was Home Secretary. And the Peelian principles are: the absence of crime is the measure of police success. The absence of crime. Um, uh, so, so as, as a permanent beat policeman, I, my, my role was to manage crime on my beat. Um, and let me give an example: as a new, new recruit, you're expected to stop minor crime with a hard stare. Okay. So the, the example would be: the, the Hammersmith Odeon was on my uh, my beat. Um, and you get um, unlicensed hot dog salesmen, okay? And, and they were spreading disease, basically. Um, uh, uh, and, and so you could arrest him for highway obstruction, but you didn't want to, because if you arrested him for highway obstruction, um, uh, he'd go back to the police station in the van, you'd have to push the manky burger van with him to take him to that. So you were taught to use the hard stare and you'd make him move, move at 100 yards. And if he didn't, you'd approach him and say, do you want, do you want me to nick you? Do you want me to get my notebook out and report you for process? Do you really want me? I've got my pen out as well, you know. <laughs> But a completely different regime, a modern policeman, and John Harris, RIP. We know John Harris, don't we? Um, woke woke yes. Tina up. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, quite, quite sad. You, you, one, one, of his, one of his slides is a policeman in a white shirt, and there's a policeman in right gear with those horrible yellow plastic jackets, isn't it? Yeah. And the one on the, one on the right is me, uh, common law, and the one on the left is the modern one. And what's the one on, on John, John's, uh, John's slide? He's clashing a big book of tickets, isn't he? He's got a quota. Yeah, so a completely different regime. That's, that's what's happened. Um, and uh, uh, some of them don't know it, you know, because they they, they, they're not talking to the older policemen. Older policemen are only too keen to leave. Um, uh, a lot of older policemen did leave, and, and, and the, the regime has changed overnight. Um, um, what? Well, yeah, your quotas. Yeah, the reason for the quota right, is so, so that. Now, aren't they? Yeah, well, of course. Yeah, Rob, Rob was saying, aren't they? The Dexo and all that, that, that sort of stuff. Again, that's a hidden scandal that we need to expose, isn't it? Is that down to Parliament or ACPO? Um, um, it must be Parliament because ACPO doesn't have authority of its own. It's, uh, it's, it's, a great, it's no more, it's no more uh, authority than the, the, than the village gardening society. Uh, uh, it's just a load of, load of people who happen to be risen to the chop like the scum in police forces. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the ACPO came about in 1963 because what happened was there was a Royal Commission on Policing in 1963 and the judge was quite a good egg. But he reduced, on home office, as a result of home office pressure, he reduced the number of police forces from 240 to 43. Um, and he also introduced a rule that the chief constable had to be had to have been a constable, because prior to prior to 1964, the chief constable was a member of the establishment. Okay, so in a county like where we in Paris, it'd be the hunting, shooting, and fishing sort, and one of their number would be the chief constable. Never been a policeman, but uh, but uh, maintained the link between the police force and and the and, and the local population, um, uh, and um, that seemed to work well for many years. But now you've got um, you've got Home Office approved training programs for chief constables. Okay, and what do you end up with? 
a frightened yes man norm normally. I don't, they, 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 they appear vicious, but I've like dealings with them. Uh, they're, they're, they're frightened yes men. In fact, I read a book about chief constables, and it, it, it said a small minority are action men, but the rest are frightened yes men. Um, Commissioner Stevens, who's one of my favourite commissioners, um, he regularly used to be driving in his, or dri being driven in his, in his staff car around London. If he saw a crime, he'd lip it, lip it, jump out and lick somebody and take him into the police station. But well, I'm shocked. Very, very okay, gentleman there, yes, yes. Do you think we will um, get out of the European Union? Well, we're not in it, um, uh, strictly speaking, in law. And the reason is, the Vienna Convention on Treaties says if, if a party to a treaty is an agent of the other side, um, then it's void. And the reason is Edward Heath was a uh, child molester, as we know, uh, subject to blackmail, um, uh, went over to Germany in, in, in just before World War II um, uh, with his boyfriend, um, took a keen interest in Hitler Youth, got compromised, um, and, and then became an agent for the other side. Um, so so, so, so um, uh, 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 we're, not, we're not in the EU lawfully. There we go. Um, the, the, other, the other side disagree, but um, uh, that's, that's the law on, on treaties, isn't it? Um, uh, it's probably one of the reasons why the uh, establishment, current establishment don't want to investigate Mr Heath. Yeah, more important than child molesting, really. And the reason is treason is more serious than murder. It's the worst possible crime, isn't it? It's the head of all crimes. The thing yep. is, John, no one listens. You, you can tell these people. These okay. Things. Yeah, I, I, I know what you say. They're just whitewashing everything. Uh, well, there'll come a point in time where, 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 where they know they can be seen. And I think that's where the psychological pressure com, 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 comes on, and they, they will start cracking. Because I, I, I've interest, interviewed tough guys. Um, I mean, you're not allowed to hit them, obviously. Um, you're not allowed to hit them. Um, uh, 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 but you might give the impression you might. Okay, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, uh, and um, uh, event eventually they will crack. And the thing that thing that, that worries uh, what worries a tough guy is, if there are other associates of his that have also been arrested, they can never uh, prisoners are kept separate. They can never know what's 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 uh, what's been said. And there's always the option of Queen's evidence, isn't it? So, so Queen's evidence is the, is, is the, uh, the policeman on behalf of the Crown can say, um, uh, 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 if, you, if you give evidence against the other parties, I'll tell the judge, and the judge may well give you a more lenient sentence. And that, that, that was approved by a judgment. Um, uh, it's a bit like suspending the law, isn't it? So I'm not entirely happy with it, but I've done it. Um, um, uh, uh, and, and, and so once we get a whistleblower, once we get, once we get a person with an outbreak of conscience, like, like uh, the, the lady lawyer we spoke about, uh, then we've got something to work with, haven't we? Uh, and of course, we live in the age of the internet, don't we? We can all talk to each other. Um, uh, we can share stuff. Uh, and uh, we're a self-selecting group of, of, of people that know there's something wrong. And the difference is between us and the population is we know what, what it is now, don't we? Yeah, you knew it before. I, did, did, I, did, I, I told you some things you didn't know, but you knew it roughly, didn't you? Yeah, you look at the short policeman and think, where did that come from? You know. I <laughs> did.